Hi, welcome back to Waxing On. Wednesday, part two with the Grateful Dead. Now, Monday we talked about an album from 1987 called In the Dark, my first Grateful Dead album. Today we're going to turn the clock back a little bit, 1970, fourth album by the Dead. Now, up until this point, they've had three albums out which are kind of more psychedelic based. This is a turning point. Robert Hunter's a little more on, the, on board. Him and Garcia wrote a lot of the tunes on this album. And it gets a little more folksy. A little less of what they had before with the psychedelics and the electrics. Uh, this album, remember we talked last episode where Brent Milan came in and replaced uh, Pigpen McKern? Well, Pigpen's playing on this one, so we've got the original lineup with the keyboards. And uh, usual one, Bill Kurtzman, Mickey Hart, Phil Lish, so Lesh, uh, Bob Weir, and Jerry Garcia. So there's our basic lineup. Been the same since 65, pretty much. Okay, this album recorded in three weeks. Now, at that time, that was unheard of, to crank out an album in three weeks. I mean, we talked about it in the dark. They did it in one week, but they'd had re a long time rehearsing that on the road for a couple of years before they actually went in the studio. This one, three weeks to lay down the tracks, get the album done. And, I mean, that's just amazing. Um, it says here, uh, more folksy than the previous albums, a new direction for the band. Now... Garcia credited that to Robert Hunter coming on board and his writing, and he was also kind of listening to bands like Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, enjoying what they were doing with the harmonies and the vocals and trying to incorporate some of that in the music they were doing. Now, this album, big head off here, Casey Jones. It's one of the tunes I mentioned earlier that I was familiar with at the time I'd heard it. I didn't know it was Grateful Dead I was listening to, but yeah, it's one of their classics. And it's probably what I would say is the big hit off the album. But when I look at some of their live albums, they performed a lot of material off this throughout their concerts. And to me, again, this was a couple albums down since I purchased my first one. Still some great tunes, the great style. And what I liked about this, again, I mentioned Garcia and Hunter were my favorites for writers. Garcia for performer. He really dominates this album. Let's take a look at what's on here. We've got... Uh, Uncle John's Band. Now that's a great tune. I remember there was a tribute album out. Lyle Lovett did a version of this. And again, you get those tunes and Lyle Lovett, you can't go wrong there. Uh, High Time, Dire Wolf. New Speedway Boogie. Cumberland Blues. Black Peter. Easy Wind. And this one was one that Hunter wrote himself, so it wasn't a collaboration with, uh, with Garcia. And Casey Jones. Now, again, a very accessible album for people. It really showed what, you know, this band could do. I think this was one of the ones here. Yeah, at this point, Jerry went out and bought himself a pedal steel guitar, usually heard in country music. He's not only playing guitar, he's playing pedal steel and banjo. So you can tell things have changed a bit. We're not in that heavy electric anymore. We're, and... I mean, Garcia was doing albums of bluegrass music, he was doing folk music, he was doing all of these things. And now he's incorporating that into what the band was doing, which, like I say, a really interesting twist. If you figure this was 1970. I mean, we're just off Woodstock. We're into some pretty heavy music going on, rock and roll. We're just on the verge of when Led Zeppelin's going to be coming out, and these guys are back doing folksy-type music. I mean, heavy metal was big. Well, we've got Janis Joplin, Big Brother, we got... Uh, Jefferson Airplane, these things in the same barrier, Bay Area, where they're doing more heavier rock oriented compared to Jerry doing banjo and pedal steel and, you know, these kind of tunes on his album. But it worked. It's something nobody else was doing, and they had a way of pulling that off. Like, even when I look at some of their other albums, you never know where the, the music's coming from. I mean, on one of the albums, um, I think it was the Skull and Roses, one of their live albums, I mean, they got a tune on there that George Jones recorded. We got songs that were written by Merle Haggard, Chris Christopherson, Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly. I mean, it's a cross section of American music that he incorporates into what this band does. They aren't a heavy metal band. They're not a, you know, a even a heavy rock and roll band. They're very diverse. They do so many different things, and they had that as part of what makes their style theirs. I mean, when you listen to it, it is very accessible. There's a lot of 
great things they draw from, and they do some wonderful performances. And Jerry's work, you know, I just can't say enough about that. I bought some Jerry Garcia albums just on his own because of, I like what he does, I like what he plays, I like what he writes, and I like his performances. So this one was just another great treat to find. If you haven't listened to them before, either of these two albums are a good place to start. In the Dark, a little more modern at the time. I'm modern, I'm telling you, it's almost like 40 years old, right? But uh, 1970s, when everything was going on around this time, a lot of change in the, in the country, this album was really a breakthrough. Working Man's Dead, check it out. You won't be disappointed. We'll see you on Friday. We're going to be back and look at a live album because, as the saying goes, there's no better dead than live dead. And we're going to see what that's all about Friday. So I hope you join us then. Until Friday, take care. Stay safe. Thanks for stopping by.